What's going on, my fellow A plusers? Welcome back once again to a brand new video. It is I, your host, as always, Adam Perez, back with another video today as we are set to bring in the return of Supergirl, baby. That's right. The CW, in fact, wind up dropping season six, the final season of Supergirl here today. We wind up getting our first episode for the season. I'm only having it this early because of the fact that Superman and Lois are clearly on a hiatus. I don't believe they come back until like May 18th, if I'm not mistaken. I do believe that there were some issues over with COVID in regards to having to stop production and things like that. So they are a little bit behind. So this is their opportunity to kind of catch up, kind of get back on track, if you will. And during the time period that Superman and Lois is going to be off the air, we are in fact going to be getting ourselves Supergirl. And then once May hits and Superman and Lois returns, Supergirl will go on a hiatus and then come back during the summertime whenever Superman and Lois conclude. I mean, talk about just throwing the schedule all out of, out of whack. But you know what? I'm really thrilled that we wind up getting Supergirl in here because even though this episode very much sort of was the um, the leftovers, if you will, right? Wrapping up sort of the cliffhanger and the season finale from last year because of the fact that, again, COVID wind up striking uh, and wasn't people weren't able to go ahead and actually finish their production on certain shows. So it is a weird vibe uh, coming back so, so long later to go ahead and get this episode. Um, but it, I felt like considering the fact that this was only one episode that they wind up having to do um, or one episode left, um, it actually wasn't bad in regards to it actually being a premiere um, in regards to kind of wrapping up what happened last season uh, and then kind of giving us an insight as to where we're going to be going for the remainder of the season, a little bit of uh, some foreshadowing and things like that. So um, it actually kind of worked out, but I, I got to admit it was a little bit weird to kind of come back after such a long time and, uh, and, and have Supergirl kind of wrapping up a storyline, if you will. I'm so used to them doing that in the season finale uh, and then moving on in the uh, actual season premiere itself so definitely some getting used to it's just funny because even though um, I also do a, a CW show for Black Lightning you know because of the fact that Black Lightning didn't have as many episodes that was definitely a season I certainly didn't have to worry about right coming back into Black Lightning this season it's just a brand new fresh start so while I haven't reviewed shows like The Flash or Batwoman, that's definitely in Indy's lane, I can definitely understand what he means now with the idea of it maybe being a little bit weird when you do have to remember that, oh, yeah, that's right, we're finishing off a storyline from last season before we progress type of thing. So, um, yeah, I just had to kind of wrap my head around it. But you want to talk about coming out of the gates swinging this week, guys. I mean, it, just all the way up until the point of the actual Supergirl intro logo. I mean, I felt like this was just sort of non-stop, non-stop. Um, maybe a little bit too quick in sort of defeating Leviathan, if you ask me, but um, this actually gave the episode plenty more time to breathe and allow for some great character interactions and really allows sort of Lex Luthor to sort of shine as the overall villain of this season, which I, I thought it would probably be like Leviathan and then maybe, you know, Lex falls um, to the wayside once Leviathan does, but um, leave it up to Lex Luthor, right, to certainly have a, a plan up his sleeve uh, and always have sort of a plan B and a plan C and even probably a plan D uh, from time to time, but um, it really came back strong, I thought, in just the opening sequence here as we finally get to see Leviathan destroyed. Um, Lex even uses that ability um, that he wind up capturing from Brainiac at the end of last season to go ahead and power himself up, so now we've got Lex Luthor, the god, uh, which is even crazier to see John Cryer running around with all that uh, special ability and things like that. And then, of course, we get the opportunity to see not only Brainiac uh, surviving thanks to the help of Dreamer, but also Supergirl defeating the tech villain and Gemma uh, to go ahead and really bring down Leviathan. Um, it, it did leave me scratching my head a little bit concerning the fact that Lex Luthor one of the smartest men in the CW and DC television universe um, took forever to be able to find the location of the um, uh, Leviathan ship. It is crazy to me that... Um that uh, that uh, Dreamer was able to find it just immediately. I don't know if she was able to just link onto where Brainiac was and just kind of teleport there or make her way there. Uh, I just find it interesting that it took Lex Luthor forever to find this place, uh, and they find it in seconds. So if anything, if I had to assume, maybe they were tracking Brainiac um, this whole time, or uh, considering the fact that she does also have these dreamscapes, if you will, right? She can probably connect into people's dreams and find out where they're where they're at. So maybe it is easy for her. To to kind of locate, but 
um, you know, I would have thought it would be a little bit harder than that, honestly. Um, and speaking of Dreamer, I really loved how they showcased some of her abilities in here. She now has this sort of like astral plane dream form that I've never really seen her utilize before, if I'm not mistaken. If I, I like, I think I've seen her in dreams, you know, looking around and scope walking around, things like that. But the idea of like coming out of your body is like a Doctor Strange astral projection. I don't recall if I've ever seen that before. Uh, and then even her struggling to kind of get Brainiac out of that room by trying to have her astral form, like actual physically contact um, the 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 mechanism uh, for the door to kind of open up. But I, I thought they did a really good job in regards to her graphics in here and really pushing her forward. Um, and I really loved her story with her and Brainiac here again. You know, the fact that Brainiac is extremely well, I don't want to say extremely difficult on uh, diff hard on himself. He certainly should be uh, based off of everything that he wind up doing. Great intentions, but he definitely went to some crazy lengths in order to go ahead and try and take down Leviathan by himself and helping out Lex Luthor. So it is kind of interesting to me. Um, one of the things that, that did leave me scratching my head in this episode was the fact that despite everything that Brainiac does, now while he certainly does help them save the day at the end of the day, I, I was kind of hoping there'd be maybe a little bit more animosity, you know, that uh, maybe somebody in the group kind of holds a grudge after everything that's kind of happened between them and uh, Supergirl and things like that, especially the outcome of this episode, right? Um, but, of course, leave it up to Dreamer, who certainly loves Brainiac. They clearly do love each other. Brainiac even tells her that in this week's episode. Um, I can understand Dreamer being the more forgiving type and um, sort of uh, embracing what they've been through and trying to make the positive changes and kind of going forward forward with one another um, and embracing each other in love. So if there was anybody that I can see definitely forgiving and moving past uh, what happened, I, I could definitely see that being Dreamer. So it was really cool to kind of see them kind of come together. She rocked the Legionnaire ring here in this episode, which I thought was pretty cool too. I'm wondering if this is like her... Um, her introduction as a, an official Legionnaire member or she's just um, holding it, you know what I mean, um, uh, in the meantime. But I, I do like the idea that... Um, um, Brainiac did allow her to use it in this episode, and it definitely did come, come into handy. So I've always really, you know, at first the the Dreamer and Brainiac stuff was a little bit weird uh, for me, but um, I felt like uh, all last season I thought they did a pretty good job of of building those two. I thought the tension was really great, really made for some great drama. So to kind of see those two characters come back together uh, really, really works for me, honestly. Um, but despite the fact that we see our heroes defeating Leviathan, Lex clearly has another agenda. Uh, he winds up having a hidden program inside of Obsidian to where everyone will love him once they get out as long as you've got the program to those of those to, to those that didn't get the upgrade or whatever the case may be is pretty much just going to be wiped off the face of the earth um <laughs> I, I will say this at first it felt like all this stuff was hitting me really quickly I'm like when the hell did this guy have all this time to do this stuff and then I remembered Oh, that's right. This was supposed to be the season finale. So if you connect it to last season, it kind of all makes sense when you sort of put all the scenes and things like that together. Right. And I love the fact that they even brought up the scene when he was talking to um, uh, Miss Tessmacher. Um handling with the the mice and things like that. I do recall that scene. The idea also about the satellites. I, the show does a really good job of subtly throwing in things that Lex Luthor is doing that maybe has nothing to do with that immediate episode, but will pay dividends into the future. And that's one of the things that I love about John, uh, John Cryer's uh, Lex Luthor. Not only is he a fantastic actor when it comes to portraying Lex Luthor and just giving him his own type of flair, but again, just at least allowing Lex Luthor to really be sort of the smartest person in the room majority of the time uh, and sort of always having uh, a backup plan uh, to kind of go along with it. So while we thought it was just one thing with Leviathan, at the end, it's definitely Lex Luthor trying to become all-powerful, if you will, to the point of wanting to become like the next uh, monitor or anti-monitor to go ahead and destroy other universes. I mean, talk about the idea of just power going to your head. You know what I mean? Um, but all of this, mind you, all of this, including like a, a crazy plan that they wind up putting together, um, I think all of this, uh, at least for Lex Luthor unveiling his plan, is before the actual uh, uh, Supergirl logo actually winds up popping up so they did a lot within like the first five minutes to kind of lay the groundwork out maybe a part of me felt like it might have been a little bit too rushed but it definitely had an impact on me and especially that uh, kryptonite s that he winds up carving into the wall before it exploded type of thing uh, I, I thought it I thought they came out of the, the gate swinging and I, I really appreciated it. it definitely got me hooked for the remainder of the episode but th this this for me 
um, really goes to showcase why there's so many heroes on this show. Um, just the crazy plan that they have in mind, right? The idea of all hands on deck, and I mean everybody's included. You got one group that's set out to go ahead and shut down the satellites, right? The Martians are set to do that. You got another group to go ahead and um, use Myriad, if I'm not mistaken. You got another one to kind of utilize the Leviathan powers or whatever, like morph it into something that's going to draw the power away from Lex Luthor so he's no longer a god and turns back into being a mortal. I I mean, all the pieces that need to, like, actually link up and work on time. Uh, this was a massive plan that they wind up putting together. But I really, just really dug uh, the execution uh, of all of it, honestly. Uh, let's see, who are some of the groups that we wind up having uh, in this episode? Oh, Magan and John, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, listen, they definitely are pushing towards the idea of them being in a relationship. We've seen them hug. We've seen them kiss, right? They definitely are making that connection. But considering the fact that they have to take down the satellites in here, I really like the idea of seeing John trying to, you know, being a little bit nervous about the idea of fully opening up to Magan, right? Like this is sort of your trial, if you will, to see, uh, are you going to, are you guys going to go ahead and survive this um, um, sort of relationship if you go any forward? To really know, can you imagine that? To really know all the truths about one person's life? I mean, uh, dating apps uh, just are, are not nowhere close to that, right? I mean, the idea of meeting somebody, being close to them, having to do something to where you mold your mind, uh, you <laughs> mend your minds together or whatever, uh, and have to see everybody's deepest inner thoughts. Like, I wonder how many relationships would break up if that were certainly the case. You know what I mean? Um, so pretty intense stuff for John and, and uh, Magana certainly have to go through. But I love the fact that Alex just kind of reassured him in the sense that, you know, something beautiful really could come out of this. And based off of those two's past, um, it's it definitely made sense for uh, for them to have to go ahead and go through that together and really create that strong bond. So I thought that was a really great moment between Magan uh, as well as uh, John here this week. Um, the other group that really fascinated me, honestly, was um, Brainiac and Lena. You know, you get two characters together that really have a lot of guilt uh, on their mind, you know. Um, Brainiac clearly feeling sorry for the lengths that he went to help Lex Luthor, thinking that he could be one step ahead and understanding that he just kind of fell behind and Luthor just took advantage of, of the whole entire situation. And I just felt it was just really appropriate for those two characters to really be together, just considering the, the past that they've had and um, how Lex has manipulated them both and how they've both made some really terrible decisions to put their friends in, har in, in harm's way, right? This also, for me, gave me a, a, a great look at Lena kind of going into the sixth season, you know, um, the idea of her being a hero or at least helping out a little bit more. I didn't know how I felt about that until I saw this episode because I, I do recall reading some previews. Um, I think maybe the showrunner came out and talked a little bit about some of the new relationships that we're going to be experiencing, you know, how Lena was going to fit into the group now. And um, I think I think it's going to be a really great fit. I, I felt really unsure, but after watching this episode and everything that she uh, went through to kind of make amends, you know, um, uh, even the idea of Supergirl uh, believing in her enough to rework Myriad, a uh, Myriad out, her even using Myriad to wipe the memories of uh, Lex and Lillian and whoever else um, knew Kara's identity, I thought was brilliant. Also, so really trying to make amends and do certainly what was right. And I, I just, I just, I love the fact that her and Brainy got to have that conversation. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if you want to feel guilty about yourself, man, get get in line, right? Like my the the shit that I've done is like a hundred times worse, Brainiac. So it's gonna be okay my guy this is our opportunity to prove to our friends our value their trust in us and let's go save the effing day and I, I thought that was just a really cool mindset for Lena to have uh and just kind of see her story and her art kind of come full circle and really work out for both characters that had really been through some shit to be perfectly honest with you um let's see here who else we already talked a little bit about Brainiac um Oh, Andrea Rojas. Andrea Rojas. Um, I found it interesting. She was actually found crying, I think, by uh, Alex's girlfriend, um, uh, Kelly. Yes, that's right. Kelly uh, wind up finding her, come to find out her father does wind up disowning her. Crazy for her to go ahead and actually get into his accounts. And I guess she, he wind up, she made him buy all the stocks or all the shares in Obsidian before it like, plummeted, if I'm not mistaken. So really screwed him over. But I love the fact that uh, Andrea decided decided to let, let, let Catco 
um, get back to its its rightful place in National City. You know what I mean? Uh, not turning it into a buzz BuzzFeed or Buzz Blast or whatever the case may be. Um, actually turning it back into um, what it certainly should have been. Uh, and so I'm really eager to see how that how that's going to turn out for her. And I gotta say, <laughs> you know, I didn't. I thought maybe I was going to get through this episode without talking about William. I honestly wasn't sure what what Williams. <laughs> Uh, presence was going to be like in the season finale, but we got William here, guys. William is back, and of course, if William couldn't get any more perfect, I mean, damn, the guy makes baked goods. Uh, he's got a killer smile. Uh, he's, I'm sure he's probably ripped under the shirt, right? Uh, gentleman of a guy. I mean, th there's nothing wrong with William. There's uh, all the girls swoon, panties drop when Williams come by. You know what I mean? Now this man's got a Pulitzer Prize <laughs> attached to his name, according to Andrea, for the fantastic interview with Tess Mocker, the storylines, all the information and stuff. And while and, and William even wants to share the in in the wealth, right? Like this should also be cars, even though Kara is no longer here, sort of thing. This also should be cars. Listen, William, you're too good of a guy. Can can we just find some skeletons in this man's closet? Eminem, can you just go in this man's closet and try and find something negative about this guy? Because William is spotless at this point, but and now he's got a Pulitzer attached to his effing name. So, um, yeah, William continues to do no wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's see here. I will say this. I was not expecting the ending that we wind up getting. Um, there clearly seems to be... Uh, well, first off, I, I will say this. Before I even get to the ending, two things. One... I really love the showdown between Lex and Supergirl inside the fortress. Um, not because Lex almost wins, but I, one, I love the fact that we also we run into Supergirl almost giving like a last will and testament. I really want to know what's on that data chip. Alex has not opened it yet, but I would not be surprised if we actually see what's on the, the disc in next week's episode since that's technically like the premiere right um so i am i am fascinated to see what is on there uh and secondly i love john crier's just solo performance too we are the champions him taking the blasters from other worlds and just boo, 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 grenades and stuff i mean i i love john crier i'm so glad that they didn't kill him off or anything like that he isn't he is in prison powerless just lex luther once again prison is not going to hold this man for very long but considering the fact that we have a luther on superman and lois already you know i was kind of thinking to myself like are they are they just gonna ride with one and then john crier is just gonna take a back seat there is there is a part of me that really hopes that john crier has a role in supergirl this season even if it's a little minuscule right like a part of me really wanted to see lex luther go for the white house you know this is a guy that was at the top when he came back to this uh prime earth if you will uh, earth prime um everybody loved lex luther and he's managed to just squander it just just you know just squander it all off uh, now nobody likes this man. Now any chances of him going to the White House seem like it's just far and away, unfortunately. So it doesn't think don't, don't think I'm gonna get um, my happy ending for Lex Luthor at the end of season six. But I gotta tell you, man, the, uh, the 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 battle between Lex along with the rest of the crew I thought was really good. Um, you know, some of the special effects could use a little bit of work, but I thought even some of the Martian stuff of them out in space, uh, even the Dreamer and the gigantic Lex Luthor out in space, I thought all that looked pretty good. Uh, but the the fight inside the fortress. Visually, maybe not so much, but I did like the tension that was building up into it for sure. Um, and the surprise ending here of Lex managing to actually put Supergirl in the freaking Phantom Zone. I was not expecting that whatsoever. But the moment somebody goes into the Phantom Zone, right, it's just a sudden dread. You just you just know the possibilities of getting somebody out uh, are, are slim to none. Even though I feel like Krypton, they did it. Um, I feel like there are definitely examples you can see like, oh, well, they have pulled people back from the Phantom Zone. Maybe we shouldn't worry too much. But anytime you go into the Phantom Zone, it's always it's just something um, very frightening and uncertain about it. You know what I mean? Um, and so uh, it's just a void. And just based off of just what we wind up getting as far as the tease of seeing Supergirl in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, it looks like it's a it looks like it's a shit show, like a, like a horror movie for sure that we're about to step into. So I'm I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. just the idea of. How do we get Supergirl back? And not only that, how do we, 
how do we replace Cara Danvers, right? Cara Danvers has a whole entire life here that people are going to expect her to come back to work, you know what I mean? Be part of groups, organizations, whatever the case may be. Um, and she's going to be nowhere to certainly be found. So I am wondering, do we go the route of fake funeral for Cara Danvers that something happened? I mean, uh, Dreamer already gave the excuse of Kara being on a trip with Catco uh, for, or Cat Grant, I should say, for a story of a lifetime. Um, I am kind of curious how they're going to cover her ass uh, in in that meantime, right? Is Andreas going to be like, "Where's Where's Kara? She was supposed to be back a week ago. She's She's not here. What's going on here, guys?" Um, so I am wondering if there's going to have to be a Plan B, or if they manage to get Supergirl out of um. Uh, the Phantom Zone rather quickly. I, I kind of hope not. Like, a part of me is kind of hoping that that car stays in the Phantom Zone um, maybe until we go on hiatus. But then again, this is the final season, right? Um, I... I it would be weird to see Kara gone for a majority of the season. You would probably want her to be able to have more screen time, be on the screen with her friends and family and things like that to say farewell and stuff, to really enjoy those experiences. But who knows? But I got to say, this is not where I expected season six to truly begin for Cara Danvers, a.k.a. Supergirl. But I'm here for it, man. I thought that was a really great surprise. I did not see that coming at all. Was not spoiled about that moment going into the episode. So Supergirl in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, that's... uh. That's a ballsy decision, man, and I cannot wait to see how they wind up uh, wrapping that up. Uh, let's see here. Any other things I wanted to talk about? Oh, um, you know, one of the I I don't one of the things that I always have loved is the relationship between Alex and John. Um, it's always been that very sort of father daughter relationship, you know. Um, she, clearly, John has watched over her her entire life, even when he was just Hank Henshaw. And um, so they definitely have gotten a bond over the years that Alex has been growing up and being a part of the DEO and stuff like that. So um, I've always loved their just sort of sentimental moments, you know, because Alex now technically having to deal with the loss of her sister um, clearly is going to be troubled and, and, and feel terrible and alone and, and upset. And um, I, I love the fact that we've got somebody like John that tries to keep her a little bit more even kill and... Um, Understanding that there definitely is going to be hope there. And it even gets to the point of giving her her own code name in Sentinel. So, I, you know, I've never been the biggest fan of the costume. I mean, it's not it's not bad. You know, her costume is not bad. But I'm really hoping for an upgrade this season. I'm really hoping for an upgrade. I don't know how much time is going to have passed from this episode to the next episode. If, if next episode is supposed to be like the premiere, if you will. I don't know how much of a time gap we're going to be getting. But I do hope that when we come back, Alex does have herself a brand new costume. I, I really do hope so. Because uh, she definitely deserves it. Especially if you're going to give her a new name, Sentinel. You know what I mean? Let's let's go the extra route and, and do something special for Alex uh, on the way out here. But man, I got to tell you, I, I, I did not know what to expect in here. I did not know how they were going to go ahead and wrap it up. Great intro to go ahead and get you situated. Um, great use of the time in between the episode to really do some great character work and character building uh, before before we, you know, before we actually get down into the final showdown and things like that. So I think it went a really great way uh, to go ahead and actually bring us into the sixth and final season. But listen, guys, listen, if there's anything in particular that I might have missed that you guys want to go ahead and certainly talk about, definitely go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the live chat or the comment section box below, whether that be character development moments, characters that they highlighted that I didn't talk about maybe storyline details I might have missed that you guys want to further go ahead and talk about let's go ahead and finish finish that discussion in the comment section box uh below ladies and gentlemen but other than that uh we certainly will be back here for you guys um I, if anything since the, it drops so late on Tuesdays like eight to nine um I probably will be posting these Supergirl reviews for you guys um on Wednesday afternoons or something like that so definitely look forward to that every Wednesday going forward uh until Superman and Lois certainly does return guys so Supergirl's back. Last and final season, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think so far in the comment section box below. Until next time, do me a big favor. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And as always, keep it A+. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.